Coming into the new year, uh, just trying to think of what to preach this morning, rather, and um, it's been a while since I've actually heard, maybe I searched wrong on the, the church website. Uh, I just typed pray, maybe Victor had it in another title, but when I saw pray, it was like back in 2018, 2019. And I thought, you know what, maybe it's a good time to uh, preach on praying, so when thou prayest. And um, it'd be good to get back into, uh, sorry, technical difficulties. So yeah, it'd be a good time, I think, uh, this year to kick back into praying, like just having that thought. You know, we've got that uh, Bible uh, memory verse program, and I think that's doing well, we're getting into the Word. Um, but, and then I know the last couple of years though, like if you think uh, of all the lockdowns, we haven't had a time of uh, like a church uh, prayer time when we used to meet at Victor's house, it's been a while, so uh, maybe it'll be a good time just to think about um, how to pray or getting into a habit. If you haven't, uh, really don't have a habit of praying, uh, maybe this will help you get, it, get back into it. Um, so, sorry, let me get my, my notes. Uh, so this... Morning, as I, I said, when thou prayest, we want to go through Matthew 6, uh, as, as um, Brother Alex here read the Bible. Um, and Matthew 6 is a continuation on, or his, God, Jesus is speaking still in the, the Sermon on the Mount, and it's a rather lengthy, from chapter 5, uh, but he gets to this point in uh, verse 5 uh, that we want to read, that um, Alex read, and when thou prayest, so God's now starting to tell how, um, how all the people that he's preaching to, how to pray. And um, so the, what, the first thing he wants to start off with is what not to do. So he's saying here, when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. So every time you read in the Bible about hypocrites, or it's usually tied to you know, the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and um, you know, these religious figures, so to speak. And, um, but the Bible calls them um, hypocrites, or Jesus calls them hypocrites. And uh, we, we tend to think like hypocrites is like, you know, they preach one thing, but they don't do what they actually preach. But I actually think um, the Bible more uh, alludes to them being like fake religious people. People who have that false appearance of religion about them um, for reasons that, for their own gain, you know, to be seen of men, really. You know, they, they mask around, are masquerading a virtuous life. So I think that's what uh, hypocrites tend to, tend to be in the Bible. It's all these people that are just uh, fake and, you know, Pharisees, Sadducees, they all just put on that show. Uh, I said this in Matthew 6, 16. Oh, sorry, the first point I want to make, yeah, is virtue signaling. Like, these guys, you know, the, look at me, how great am I? Like, look, I'm praying. Like, it, they want to be, like, seen as something, uh, to be doing something for God, when really it's just one for show. So they're showing how great they are, virtually. And so this main point I want to, uh, first point is that don't be a hypocrite. As, uh, as the Bible says when we read, and thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. So, and here's the point that I want to show you, that they're, they're fake. In Matthew 6.16 it says, uh, when we read to the, the fasting part, you read down, uh, down uh, further into the chapter, it says, moreover when you fast, be not as the hypocrites, once again the hypocrites, of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces. So these guys are purposely going out, putting on a show, in this case, in fasting, you know, they disfigure their faces. And uh, they're appearing to be righteous in their fasting. And uh, you, you think of, I guess, um, in, in, it reminds me a bit of like Islam when they have that Ramadan, that month of fasting, so to speak, you know, from sun, sun up to sundown, they can't eat. But some of them, like, you know, it seems like they're just doing it for culture's sake. You know, they're going out like, oh, you know, I can't eat lunch. You know, you're eating your lunch and like, oh, why? It's like, oh, yeah, I'm fasting. But some of them, like, just seems like they're fasting because, you know, not for, they, like, actually really want to do it for their God, but, uh, you know, just for culture. You know, it's so, sort of like that. In that sense, like, you know, for us fasting, you know, don't, don't, don't put on a sad face, you know, don't, don't make it seem like you're fasting and make, make it seem like you're not fasting at all. Like, you know, you're healthy. And we'll get to another verse a bit later showing, uh, showing that case. But in Matthew, uh, so that was the first point, don't be a hypocrite, you know, see these guys, they're being fake about how they uh, pray and even fast, you know, so they're virtually signaling what they do. Point number two is don't be pretentious. You know, these guys, these Pharisees, these scribes, these hypocrites, uh, they're, they're being pretentious in how they do it. Matthew 23, 14 says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. 
therefore you shall receive the greater damnation. So, as we see here, these hypocrites, in this case, they're devouring widows' houses. You know, they're using prayer as this method, method you know, they're making long prayer. Some, some people, they're, when they pray, you know, they, they might start quoting like, you know, 100 verses as they're praying. You know, we shouldn't be like that. You know, we shouldn't aim to be extravagant in our prayer. Like, oh, yeah, and, um, and make it seem like, you know, I'm a good prayer. I can pray good. In this case, you know, maybe they're, they're, they're targeting um, the widows, saying, look, you know, if you don't let me pray for you, you know, God's not going to help you. I, I'm, I'm assuming that's what these guys are doing here, and the, the scribes, these Pharisees, you know, devouring widows' houses um, in, a religious figure, in a religious way. You know, they're pretending that, um, you know, I'm praying and fasting for you, therefore you should, you know, give to me, or, you know, because of what I do for you, God's now going to help you. We shouldn't be like that when we come to pray or in fasting. You know, we, we shouldn't be pretentious on how we pray, uh, making a point on certain parts. You know, we should just make it simple uh, as we pray, make it easy. We're talking to God. But that's what the Pharisees, the hypocrites do. Um, they're, being vir- in, uh, they're virtually signaling as they're hypocrites, but they're being pretentious. Uh, the next point I want to point is that they do it for sh- don't do it for show. And these guys, these hypocrites, they also do it for show, you know, as... A, as as it all ties together, these are the don'ts that you don't want to do when you're praying. Not being a, don't be a hypocrite in the sense that you're not really doing it for God, you're just doing it for show, you don't want to be pretentious, you don't want to make long prayers. And uh, Luke 20, verse 47, similar verse, um, which devour widows' houses and for show make long prayers, the same shall receive greater damnation. So these guys, when they're praying, you know, somehow they, maybe they're praying with big words, uh, cool words that make them sound cool or whatever it may be when you're praying, you know, just make it simple uh, don't do it for long, don't do it for show and don't do it as the hypocrites are and uh, in regards to these people that pray in that way, you know, it says in Matthew 20, 23, 28, even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity so most of these religious figures in the Bible that at that time, you know, the Pharisees and scribes Sadducees, you know, they are all appear to other people like, you know, I'm going to pray for you, we're praying, this is what we do. But what the Bible calls them is they're full of iniquity, uh, hypocrisy and iniquity. So they're just doing it for show. So they're, they're really just virtue signaling, like, you know, we're doing this out for everyone, look how great we are. And that's the, paint, the painting the picture of who the Pharisees and the Sadducees are in the Bible. Um, let's continue on. Um, Continuing on in the verse, when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love praying, uh, pray standing in the synagogues and in the corner of the streets, that men they may be seen of men. And the Bible says, verily I say unto you, they have their reward. You know, people are seeing them, and they're probably like, oh, you know, that guy's praying, good on him, you know. But we'll see soon that we shouldn't be that, uh, have that mindset, you know, I'm going to pray, uh, I can show you um, that I'm in, in a virtuous in that sense. Because in the next verse it says in Matthew 6, 6, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So, as the Bible says, enter into thy closet. You know, I don't think Jesus is necessarily you know, saying make a closet, you know, build it in your house, and you know, enter into it and start praying. Because you know, then people would start to know, like, oh, he entered into the prayer closet. You know, it's a bit like, oh, he's praying. It's, it's a bit counterintuitive. So I think Jesus is just trying to make the point that, you know, not to do this as seed of men. You know, when you're praying, when you're praying hard, you know, you have a big, uh, so you have a big uh, problem at hand. Um, maybe you're stuck at something at work, a big project, and you need something to be prayed for. You know, don't be seen of it. You know, just go to a secret place between you and God. And... Uh, it sort of reminds me when I was a, when I was a child in, in Sunday school where um, we first learned, you know, this is probably when I was like five or six, and we first learned like, um, you know, God can see through, you know, the walls of, or your blanket even when the teacher's like, what, he can see me? So I thought, how about if I put two blankets over, you know, could he see me then? And so my mind was boggled when I was a child, like, wow, God can see me, he can read my thoughts? Like that's, I was, I was like, wow. But yeah, so you don't necessarily need to build a, um, the closet. Don't to in, you know, you can technically, you know, you can pray in your mind anywhere at any time uh, between you and God. But the point Jesus is trying to make is, you know, don't make it like as a show. Don't make it to be seen as men or how virtuous you are when it comes to praying, as some uh, people do. Um, 
But how about when someone, like, somehow catches you when you are praying or even fasting, you know, they, they catch you like this. They suspect that you do and they ask you, like, oh. But, you know, I think you should just, um, sorry, just going through the slides. Secretly praying, build your prayer closet. But then also the second part, part is, you know, this, if someone catches you or someone suspects that you are praying, you know, why don't you just tell them, you know, you pray, them to get, pray together with them. And it, it builds a... Uh, Builds a good relationship that way, I think. So if someone suspects you praying, you just tell them in your heart, like, you know, I've got, I've got a really big thing, brother or sister. Please pray with me. I've got this. Um, I need my, my, you know, health, my parents' health, my family, friends' health. Whatever it may be, you tell them. Uh, we have this example in First Samuel 1. Um, and Hannah was uh, praying. And so, so Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now, Eli, the priest, sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord, and she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord and wept, uh, wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but wilt give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, uh, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not uh, thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go. In peace, and God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. So we have here, El, um, sorry, Hannah. She was praying really heavily in her heart, you know, she wanted a child. And so, you know, Eli called him. Uh, he's like, you know, why, why, stop drinking, stop being, you know, why are you drunk? And she's like, no, I'm really heavy, you know, I'm really, I'm praying for this, for this reason, you know, I want a child. And so when, you, when someone suspects you, you know, it's better just to share that prayer that, um, that prayer request. Sorry, I'm just going to turn this is a bit cold. Freezing up here. Uh, so yeah, if someone, tell, someone suspects you, or you know, it's just best to share it, uh, what you're praying for, instead of you know, hiding like, oh, you know, I can't tell you I'm praying, it's between me and God. No, why don't you just share the burden with um, another person, help them uh, may, maybe pray for it too. And uh, it's sort of like in Acts uh, 12, when, when when um, James, he was uh, killed first, and he was, Peter was also caught. He was about to be killed. And so the other disciples were praying really heavily about him. It says this in Acts 12, 5, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him, because they thought Peter was going to die, as James was, if you read earlier in the, in the chapter. And so actually, he, eventually Peter, as you know the story, he, he got out, and Peter was come to himself, and he said, now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. So it's good to pray together. Uh, don't pray uh, if someone suspects you or if there's something big that you really want to pray for, you know, share it. It's something you should um, share, I believe, and especially something big or something heavy in your heart. It's, it would be good to share. Uh, it says this in, in Mark 14, where it talks about Jesus. You know, he was about to be taken, uh, and he's, he's also heavy in, that, in this, um, you know, and he's really, he's really worried for the what's to come, in that sense that he knows he's going to go through a lot of pain. And so he took out some of his disciples to pray, and it says in Mark 14, And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane, and he saith to the disciples, Sit ye here, while I shall pray. And he taketh with him Peter and James and John, and began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. And saith unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry here and watch. So we see that they didn't have a prayer closet, so to speak. You know, he just went out to, and gathered some of his disciples and they prayed together. They prayed together. So, as in comparison to the first part, you know, they're, they're doing it for show. Um, but here, you know, you want to pray uh, as best you can, you know, between you and God. You're not trying to show everyone. But if someone, you know, if, if you need someone or someone suspects you, you know, just get them to pray with you. Um, and I know this isn't really in Matthew 6, but I wanted to point, like, you know, plan your fast as well. Um, and, 
if, if there's like a big family event coming or a big party, you know, you got coming up, uh, you got friends events, and you're like, oh, you know, I've, I've got some, uh, something I really need to pray for, maybe don't fast that day, you know. It says this in Matthew 6, which is what I was leading to before. But when thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face. Thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So, you know, make, make yourself look fresh, like no one suspects you of fasting at all when, you, when you're having that time where you're praying and fasting. You've got to plan your fast. Don't plan it around, you know, big events or, you know, you have a few conferences coming up. You know, probably best not to fast today. If you are, you know, anoint thy head and wash thy face. Make, you, make yourself look, you know, um, uh, like as if you're not fasting compared to, you know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees who probably had to disfigure their faces, right? So plan your fast. Uh, when you're secretly praying in that sense. It's between you and God, or you and a group of people together. You're not trying to do it for sure. You're doing it for, um, you know, you're really praying for something. Uh, you, you're talking to God. Otherwise, you know, you have your reward, as the Bible said. Uh, the next point I want to bring up to is, you know, these, these people, Jesus is saying, um, don't do this. Um, don't, you know, do it for show. Sure. Don't be as the hypocrites are. Um, but do you put, uh, make, as like a prayer closet. Do you do it yourself between you and God? But also, it goes back to another don't, is don't use vain repetition. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. So you can probably think um, certain religions have their own like, way to the pray. You know, Catholics have it as well. I know in, uh, when we went to, back in the old church I used to go to, we went to Sri Lanka, there was this temple that they called the Temple of the Tooth. Apparently there was like some... God's tooth in a box or something in the middle of the temple. We couldn't see the tooth, but it was just the temple of the tooth is what they called it. And you know, some of these monks, uh, they were there. They just, it just seems like they're, they're just lounging around. They're just, just sitting down, praying, but they're, they're really just chanting. They're just saying the same thing over and over again. Um, but yeah, so don't chant when you pray. Like don't, um, you know, I know particularly the Catholics, they have certain creeds or chants and the way they pray. You know, they say the same thing maybe five, ten times. I'm not sure exactly how it is. But, you know, that's what they, how they do it. They pray, they pray chanting. But the Bible says, you know, but when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. You know, they usually involve Joseph, Mary, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and the Father. They always use the same thing and they try to repeat it. You know, don't chant, you know. And um, it's funny that they say, the Bible says, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. So, you know, they're saying the same thing over and over again. Um, Jesus is saying, you know, don't, don't uh, use vain repetitions. Don't keep saying the same thing and, for, and don't, you're not going to be heard in that way. But Jesus is rather saying, you know, speak freely. You know, if you think about prayer, it's just you talking to God um, and you can speak as a, a father to the child, which is what we'll get to soon. But don't use vain repetitions. Um, imagine like your children, right? Like you, you, go, you go to a shops and they want like maybe a toy or, or a ice cream or something, but they're going to you and they say the same thing like 10 times to you before you can buy it to them. That'd be a bit, bit weird, like... Daddy, mommy, you guys are wonderful. Daddy, mommy, you guys are wonderful. Daddy, mommy, you guys are wonderful. And can I have that toy now? It's just going to be really weird. So don't use vain repetitions as the heathen do. You know, it's, it's just, um, don't do it as like as a creed. You know, speak freely to God. Speak freely to the God, uh, to God. It says this in 2 Corinthians 3.17, now, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So there's freedom when you pray. Uh, pray. There's not really any right or wrongs. God does give, you, uh, give us um, you know, somewhat of a structure a bit later, which we'll get into. But really, there's no right or wrong when you pray. You know? How do I pray? You just, it's you talking to God as a, a, a child to their father. Um, so there's no, there's no right or wrong. Just speak freely to God uh, what you have or what you need. Um, but don't use vain repetition. Don't chant to God um, as as the heathen do. And also, um, don't inflict self-pain, you know. In Philippines, um, you've probably seen videos where, uh, particularly around the Easter time, where, you know, these guys are holding crosses, right? And then they're whipping themselves in the back and they're bleeding. Or sometimes they do that to, to uh, some um, religious do uh, as they pray to God. You know, you think of the story of... Um, Elijah and Mount Carmel, where these guys were inflicting, cutting themselves and praying to God, um, thinking that, you know, their God will hear them. You know, don't inflict self-pain. You know, the Bible's, Bible's very clear, you know, it's just you praying to God. You might be sorrowful, 
But remember, it's just you talking to God as your Father, as, as God Almighty. You have that freedom. You have that liberty. You know, um, it's, it's funny that I see in the, in the NIV particularly that they've... I, I can see where they got this from. Because in the King James Version, which is in 1 Corinthians 9.27, but I keep my body under... Uh, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. But if you look into the NIV, what it actually says, is, which is a bit weird, uh, no, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave, so that after I preach to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. So these new versions, um, you know, they, they, it's, I just find it weird that he's saying strike my blow to the body. You know, that's like... If you think about Mount Carmel, that's exactly what these false religions do, these worshippers of Baal. You know, they're cutting themselves, they're, they're making, um, putting affliction to themselves and thinking that God will hear them. But God, our God is not like that. Jesus is not like that. He just wants you to talk to him as a child to the Father. So the first three main points that we went, we went through is, you know, the virtue and signaling. Don't do as hypocrites are. You know, don't, show, don't do it for show. You don't want to pray um, being that... Um, you know, fake virtuous person. But also you want to aim to be, do it secretly in that sense. You know, you, it's you talking to God or you and a group of friends, brothers, sisters in Christ. You want to do it together. You're secretly praying in your uh, prayer closet, as, as Jesus said. But also don't use vain repetition. You know, you're not chanting, you're not hurting yourself, you're not doing anything religious uh, rig rigorously, like, you know, in order to think, oh, God's going to hear me if I do such and such. No, just speak to God. And so now... As we have a don't do as the hypocrites are, but put your prayer closet and don't use uh, vain repetitions. Jesus now begins his uh, example prayer. You know, this is somewhat of an outline. Once again, there's no really right and wrong on how to pray. But uh, for those that, you know, maybe want a bit of structure, Jesus starts to begin, um, you know, this somewhat of a structure. And all of us know, you know, the Lord's Prayer. We've heard it some form or some manner. You know, as, but Jesus begins, you know, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So the beginning point that Jesus is trying to make is that we are addressing God, addressing our Father. Um, and so if you think about it, that's like the creator of heaven and earth. We're, we're talking to God himself. That's, that's something that should like sometimes mind boggling. You know, sometimes you get starstruck. Maybe you see a superstar that you like in, um, somewhere and you're like, wow, that guy's over there. Like, but you know, we're talking to the most high God. We're talking to the creator of the universe. We're addressing God. Um, as we said, after the man of prayer, our Father, which art in heaven. So you're talking to God, but he also makes the point that it's our Father. This is like a child to, your, to the parents, you know. We, they, we shouldn't be, um, you know, um, scared or worried what God's going to think. You know, just pray to God. We're addressing him. We're addressing him as our Father. And uh, if you see here, here in Hebrews 4, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens... Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So and when we're going to the Father, or when we're, going to, we're praying, talking to Jesus, um, we can go boldly to his throne, you know, throne. That we can find grace to help in time of need. So that's what we're coming for in prayer. Uh, God help us. Or, but we're opening up, we're addressing God who He is, and, what is, and uh, that we need help. So it says this in Romans 8. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray, for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us, with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So sometimes we don't even know how to pray or what to pray. We're just going straight to God. Like, you know how to, God, I don't know what to say. This is just an overwhelming experience. Lord, just please help me. You know, I like it how it says here, you know, we don't, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but it's Jesus, God himself knows what we are going to pray. Um, and what we're going to spare, or what we need. So sometimes we don't even know what we need or what, what uh, knowledge or tools that we might need to help us in that time. But God knows. And so it's just to go to Him and, and um, go boldly to Him as a father, as a child to their father. And, um, and it, 
And that's how we get to the, Ro the, the most popular verse in Romans 8.28. For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So if you're praying and you don't know what to pray, you, you want something, God to work something great in your life, uh, just go to him. He's our father. He's the child to the father. And you don't have to worry. You can go boldly to his throne of grace. And he's, uh, he's got open arms. He's like the child, the, the prodigal son, right? Even if you haven't prayed in a while, probably a low point in your life, and you, you want to talk to God, just go back to him. Start to pray. God, Father, please help me. So that's how Jesus begins, um, you know, he's in that sense, that structure. And can, uh, in Matthew 7, 11 says, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? So likewise in Luke eleven thirteen, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? So the difference in these two is good things to them that ask Him. You know, if you're going to God, for those that have children, you know, sometimes we, we fall for their like, oh, can I have this? You know, but how much more if you need something that God will give you if you pray for it? So that's how much boldness you should, you should have when you're going to God. Like, God, I really need this help. Um, you should have that boldness and that confidence that you're speaking to God. But in, in, in Luke, it also says, give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him. Sometimes you need you know, to know the Word, you need to be bold in how um, you need to approach something. You know, if you need help, just have that confidence that God will give it to you, whether, whether it may be physical or spiritual. But you know, that doesn't give you like a green light to ask, you for, ask for anything. Like, God, you know, give me like a million dollars, give me a two, three-story house. You know, it's, it's not going to happen. It's not really a green light to, to ask God of that thing. Because it says this in James 4.3. You ask and receive not because you ask him is that you may consume it upon your lusts. So you have to have a bit of balance that, you know, God, um, maybe, you know, you're not, you're not trying to um, put yourself higher in that sense. But when you're asking for God for something, you know, look at, think about it with your lusts like, oh God, I want this, I want that. No, you got, it should be needs, not just what you want. So you have to sort of balance it. You know, if you're going to ask and pray for your business to boom, you know, why don't you ask God to give you the wisdom to, for networking or how to scale up or even down in some sense, you know, sometimes less is more. But, you know, ask God for the wisdom instead. Ask God for the tools and the, the, what you need rather than, you know, the end goal. You should ask uh, more so uh, what you need at the time that you won't consume it upon your lusts. So have balance. Have balance. So we're addressing God, but we also want to revere Him, right? So says this in Matthew 6, 9, as we continue. Hallowed be thy name, at the end. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So we're reverencing God, we're acknowledging who He is, um, we're giving praise to Him. You know, you see sometimes in Psalms, um, you see when David or Asaph writes Psalms, it talks about how great uh, God is and, he's, and um, how He's helped the nation of Israel before. And sometimes it's saying, you know, thy, mer thy mercies endureth forever. And you talk about how great God um, helped them through the wilderness and getting out of Egypt. You know, we, we ought to think when we're approaching God, you know, we're going to think how great He is and hallowed be Thy name in this sense. You know, we're, we're giving Him the praise and glory. That, that's who we're addressing, our Father and how powerful He is. Um, but God, Jesus continues, we're also acknowledging His power. So if you think about the first three things, you're talking about God first. When you're opening up with um, prayer, you know, you're going to God, you're revering Him, acknowledging His power. It says in, in the next verse in Romans 6, Sorry, let's put them both together. Romans 6, 9 and 10. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which is um, the first three points, you know, we're addressing God. Hallowed be thy name. We're reverencing him. But thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So we're acknowledging his power, you know. That's who we're talking to. God, the most high, the creator of heaven and earth. Um, that's who we're going to. As a child, we're going to our Father. But we're also acknowledging his power. And um, we should be bold, uh, go boldly to that. So the next thing Jesus wants to address is also for our needs to be met. Um, it says, give us this day our daily bread. And I, I like this, um, how Jesus says this, because it can somewhat be a double meaning, like, you know, physically and spiritually bread. And we'll go, we'll go through some examples. In Exodus 6, 15, 16, 15, it says, And when the children of Israel saw it, uh, they said one to another, It is manna. For they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. So Jesus is now feeding the nation of Israel this manna. Um, that would have been cool to see from, you know, from heaven. But um, I like how Jesus not only 
talks about it like, you know, have your daily bread physically, but spiritually, because it says this in uh, Deuteronomy 8, all, com all the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. And that's where we get, you know, the famous verse in Matthew 4.4, 4, and even Luke 4.4. 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Uh, same thing in Luke 4.4. 4. Jesus answered him saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So when Jesus is saying, you know, um, give us this day our daily bread when we're praying, you know, he's addressing physical and spiritual needs, right? We're, we need to know the Bible, but um, we also need to pray, you know, God, um, maybe for your food, or, you know, you're struggling to make ends meet at work. Lord, I need to work hard. I need some more income. Lord, help me. Um, so help, uh, help, pray to God for that, you know. But you've got to also know that it's spiritually, you know, you're not going to live by your bread alone, but you've got to trust in the Lord, trust in your word. You've got to know the word in that case, you know, if you're not reading the word, um, you should start getting into it. It will help you in your life. But that's the case with um, God, as he's saying here, and, you know, you, you're not going to live by your bread alone, but by every word of God. So as a Christian, you're praying, um, you're asking God for your needs to be met. Sometimes you don't know what to pray for, right? So you just go to him like, Lord, I don't know what, what scenarios or circumstances I need help with what tools I need, but I'm trusting you, Lord, please help me. And uh, he'll, feed, he'll um, provide for your physical needs, as well as your spiritual, you know. Sometimes you need to be bold at work. Uh, you need to learn more of your word, and you need God to guide you in the scriptures. God will help you in that way. And it helps to know his word. You know, we know the memory verses that we have. Uh, the kids are doing really well. You know, thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. You know, we've got to know the word as well. Um, when, and it helps you when you're praying and, and you think of um, as God guides you, when you, what you're praying for, maybe he'll bring your scriptures into your mind. It says this in Psalms 119, 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So God will direct you with his word. Um, so when you're praying, maybe he'll help you uh, find those words, the scriptures to, to help you in that time of need. And um, once again, I just want to show you that Jesus ties himself as the bread of life. Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth in me shall never thirst. So obviously that's a good verse for um, eternal security. But I like how Jesus says, you know, I am the bread of life. And he says, you know, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. I like how it all ties together in that sense, you know, asking for our needs to be met physically as well as spiritually. Both, you know, with our bread, but Jesus being uh, the word of God. We need him. We need the word um, to be empowered by it. So we're asking for our needs to be met. Also for forgiveness. It says uh, in Matthew 6, 12, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So um, if you jump down to a bit further in the chapter, it says in Matthew 6, 14, for if, you give, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So imagine praying for someone or a brother in Christ and you know, you, they've rubbed you the wrong way, it's a bit hard to pray for them. If you imagine uh, God, you and, and the person you're praying for, but you don't like the other person you're praying for. Maybe you should. Like, it's, you, if you're praying to God uh, for that person, you should do it from grace and heart as well. You forgive them. Because the Bible says this in Psalm 66, 18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. You know, if you're hiding it from God, you know, why are you praying to God in that sense? Um, you should always have that, you know, you want God to help people out of sin, out of um, problems, trouble, iniquity. You want God to help them, regardless of who you're praying for, what you're praying for. It says this in James 3. Um, and if you think about it in, in your sense, like how you're praying for people, you know, like, oh, God, help them. I hope, I hope, I hope they do, I hope, you know, they do wrong in the job or something. You know, you don't want to be praying for people, bad to be upon people. Um, we as Christians, you know, we should strive to be, um, you know, a light, an example to people. When we pray for other people, you know, we want God to help them or turn the circumstances that maybe they'll change um, to, to benefit, you know, the cause of Christ. It says in James 3, uh, out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? 
Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine figs? So can no fountain birth yield salt water and fresh. So as you're praying, you know, you don't want to be like, um, you know, negative about other people, especially people that's probably rubbed you wrong before. You know, you should pray well for them. Pray that God will help them, change their mind, maybe they turn to God. Um, unless they're reprobate. Because it says this in uh, Matthew 18. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall I, my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore the, is the king of the, sorry, therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children, and all that he had in payment to be made. Well, that's pretty big. Um, but going on, the servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. Uh, that's pretty good. That's a good deal. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and, and told unto their Lord all what that was done. All right, so we won't continue on, but eventually, um, once again, the, the original um, Lord that forgave, you know, saw this, and he went back unto him. He was like, you know, why did you do this? And so the Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors. So, you know, as, as uh, Christians, we should remember that we're sinners ourselves. You know, maybe we have problems or faults. Um, we're nothing compared to God. So when you're praying for other people, you know, that, that's the mindset also. That, you know, God help, help this person also. Um, that whatever time of need that they have or change their mind to, to turn to you or have the right wisdom. So you're praying for forgiveness um, in that sense, not only for you, but also for the people that you're praying for, to forgive, uh, for God to forgive you. Because he will forgive you if you go to him. And uh, I just thanks to be to Jesus for that. But continuing on an example of prayer, we also have fleeing temptation. Uh, Matthew, as we continue the verse in Matthew 16, it says, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so when Jesus is saying, um, lead us not into temptation, everyone's going to be tempted, right? So it says this in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but, as, but such as has come into man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will, the, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. So God, uh, when you're praying to God, you know, we also ought to think like, you know, God lead us not to temptation. We're going to face trials and troubles and temptation, but help us, God, give us the strength, the wisdom, the will, um, to, to overcome the temptation. And it helps to know the word in that sense. You know, it says this in Luke 8, 13, They on the rock are they, which they, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believed, and in time of temptation fall away. So sometimes you need to be grounded in God's word uh, to overcome temptation. You know, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee, as we read before. You know, know the word. When you're praying, that's why God helps you. Like, lead us not into temptation. Help us to bring the word um, the scriptures or uh, the wisdom from your word, God, help me to know it. As, uh, as we go back here, um, God will help you to escape it. God will help you to escape it. And um, the main point that he really, I guess, um, to flee that temptation also, as we continue reading from this um, verse passage, um, that you may be able to escape it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee out from idolatry. So, you know, you stay busy. Um, don't let yourself be idle. It's usually when times when you're not thinking or you're just being lounging around is when you, you know, waste time, you fall into sin. But as we saw, you know, lead us not to temptation. You know, you've got to know the word. Help God to know. Um, if, you, if you really have nothing to do, you know, start reading the Bible again, you know, and help God, let God um, guide you through that. So lead us not into temptation, fleeing temptation. The next point that Jesus gives in, uh, Matthew, in the Lord's Prayer, as we say, is health and safety. Uh, but as we read, uh, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So I put evil as a health and safety in that sense. Um, if you think about evil, it's about your health, right? And health is also part of your safety. It says this in Proverbs 13, 21. 
evil pursueth sinners, but to the righteous good shall be repaid. So, you know, when you're praying to God, you also think like, God help me, like, you know, not to take away from sin or hurting others. You know, it's usually these people that are wicked, you know, that they're, um, they're pursuing sinners. You know, if you have, if you have evil in, or ill intent in your heart, it's going to come back to you. You know, where you serve is what you reap. Um, and as a Christian also, you also want to foresee the evil or you want to escape, you know, the bad events that can happen. So it says this in Proverbs 27, 12, A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. So you want God to help you to know, you know, the, the dangers in life, you know, to, to wait, go away from the evil. Deliver us from evil. So hopefully God will give you the wisdom, the knowledge, you know, street wisdom, as they say in the, in the streets, you know. No, not to go in that dark corner or that dark area, but to know and foresee the evil. So help uh, and ask God, you know, keep us safety for today. Um, so, but to deliver us from evil. And uh, also the reason for delivering us from evil, not only for safety, but for your health. Um, when you think about your health, I like this uh, verse in, in, or as, as Peter was going through in shipwreck, right, in this, in this passage, uh, and while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that you have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore I pray you to take some meat, for this is your health. For there shall no whoops, sorry, for there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you, and when you have thus spoken he shall take and he took bread, and gave thanks to God in presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. They were they then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. So Paul was saying, you know, take this meat for this is your health. So if you think about um, deliver us not from evil, eating healthy as well. You know, God, um, as we said, have our um, needs be met. Um, eating meat in this case is, is, is good for your health. You know, uh, for the vegetarians out there, you know, this shows you that you, the meat they have is for your health. Um, and God will help you, pro uh, provide you for that. So, so health and safety is what uh, really God wants, uh, you, what you want pray, to pray to God for. Um, in terms of safety uh, and health as well, it says, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. So just more further uh, re um, emphasizing uh, health and safety. Um, to stay away from evil and have good health. So as God, Jesus closes in the, in the Lord's Prayer, He's just re-acknowledging His power. You know, um, as we read in Matthew 6.13, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So, once again, we're just closing and we're knowing um, who we're praying to, right? So, we're addressing God. We're reverencing Him. We acknowledge His power. We're asking for our needs physically and spiritually to met and forgiveness for us and others. Uh, and you're fleeing temptation. You know, help, asking God to help you flee from the temptation. Um, Stop being idle or helping you to know your word, the word. And also for your, his health and safety, you're asking God to help you from, from evil, for your health, um, by also re-acknowledging God's power. Like, God, I'm praying to you because I just need help in this case. You know, my heart's heavy. I really need help. I need my brother or sister in Christ needs help. You know, when he, this is just an example structure, the example prayer in that sense. There's nothing wrong to really pray, you know, the Lord's prayer in and of itself. But once again, you, know, you don't want to do vain repetition as the heathens do. Um, God's allowing you to openly and freely pray to him as a child to his father. But Jesus gives you this example um, in that the Lord's Prayer is, like, is somewhat of a structure. Remember, we're, just, we're praying to God and that's who we need help from. The one that can control all things. And um, that's just the blessing that we have as his children. And um, if really, I like how it, we, that I'll end with this verse. Philippians 4, 10, 10, I, I, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. So when we pray, we have that mind, we can go boldly to God and I'm um, asking for our needs to be met, for temptation, struggles and trials, our health and safety, even for other people. And um, that's how we ought to pray. If you don't know how to pray, you know, just how you, you just go to God freely as a child to his um, father. So just to recap quickly, um, don't do as the heathens are, as virtually signaling. You know, they're, they're all praying to be seen of men, praying long prayers, using fancy words, devouring widows' houses. You know, what you want to secretly pray. You want to, it's you praying to God, or you and a group of um, brothers and sisters in Christ praying together, um, hoping uh, and asking God for your help, 
but also don't use vain repetitions, you know, as a, um, like chanting or saying the same things. Um, and Jesus warns that, you know, th these people think that they'll be heard for their much speaking. And then Jesus gives an example of prayer, you know, this is how you pray like this. Addressing God, reverencing Him, acknowledging His power, asking for your needs to be met physically and spiritually, forgiveness, fleeing temptation, health and safety, and really acknowledging His power, and you close to God knowing that He can help you. And so, that's how, thank you this morning. Um, hopefully you got something out of the, this um, sermon. Let's close in prayer. All right. Dear Jesus, I just thank you, Lord, for um, opening your word once again. I just thank you that we can um, see your word and get the wisdom from it. And I just pray for this year. Help us um, grow in our prayer lives um, to be um, more um, prayerful in, in our lives, Lord. Uh, mostly mostly uh, secretly, Lord, that we just pray harder instead of being idle and help us to know your word. Um, as we go this um, today, um, pray we have good fellowship as we gather around um, in, in um, lunch together. Pray that we'll be encouraging each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you once again for salvation. In your name, Jesus Christ. Amen.